In this video, we're going to be talking about evaluating trigonometric functions of any angle, and specifically doing some examples of evaluating trigonometric functions of non-acute angles. So to find the value of a trigonometric function of any angle theta, you first need to determine the function value of the associated reference angle theta prime. Then, depending on the quadrant it is in, you're going to fix the appropriate sign to the function, whether it's positive or negative. So we're thinking of our all students take calculus that we've talked about before. So in our first quadrant, all of our trig functions will be positive. In the second quadrant, just the sine function and the cosecant function. In the third quadrant, our tangent and our cotangent will be positive. And in our fourth quadrant, our cosine and our secant will be positive. By using reference angles and the special angles discussed in other videos, you can greatly extend the scope of exact trig functions. So to make it a little bit easier, we have a table that shows the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent functions of special angles and quadrant angles. Let's move on to some examples. So we're going to be evaluating each trig function in this example. So for example A, we have the cosine of 4 pi over 3. So the first thing that we want to do here is draw that angle. So here we have 4 pi over 3, and we want to find that reference angle. Notice that this is in quadrant 3. So this is in our t, or our take, or our tri, or our tangent quadrant. So we're going to take pi, because that is our closest horizontal axis. So pi minus 4 pi over 3 tells us that we're going to have a reference angle of pi over 3. And we know that because we are in the third quadrant, that cosine is going to be negative. So we're going to have the negative cosine of pi over 3, which happens to be a negative 1 half. And we can see that from our reference table, that the cosine of pi over 3 equals 1 half. So we'll have that negative 1 half then. So we're able to say that the cosine of 4 pi over 3 equals negative 1 half. Let's take a look at the tangent of negative 210 degrees. So we'll start off by graphing that. And so we'll graph negative 210 degrees, and we're going to want the reference angle. Now notice that our terminal side is in quadrant 2. And so we're going to be using pi again, or in this case 180 degrees, to find our reference angle. So we're going to take 210 degrees minus 180, so that tells us our reference angle is 30 degrees. Because we're in the second quadrant, only our sine functions are positive there. So we're going to have a negative tangent of 30. So the tangent of 30 degrees is going to be, if we look at our table, pi over 3 over, excuse me, radical 3 over 3. Now tangent, if you're like, oh, I forget the table, it's going to be your y over your x, or your sine over your cosine. So it's going to be 1 half divided by radical 3 over 2. So that's how the radical 3 over 3 is achieved is they take the negative one half, or excuse me, the one half divided by three, radical three over two. And here I've written it with a division sign because we'll need to keep change flip, cross out the twos, which gives you one over radical three. And then when I rationalize that by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by radical three, it then gives me radical three over three as shown in the table. So I'm able to say that the negative tangent of 30 is going to give me the negative radical three over three. So I can say that the tangent of negative 210 degrees is going to be exactly negative radical 3 over 3. Let's take a look at the cosecant of 11 pi over 4. So again, we'll begin by kind of graphing that and see what quadrant we're going to be in. Notice that we go around a couple times here, so about one and a, almost a half times, and we're in the second quadrant again. But a cosecant is part of our sine function, so this should be positive. So we're going to find our reference angle first, again going from our pi, because that's the closest x-axis. So we're going to have not just pi though, because 8 divided by 4 is a 2, and 12 divided by 4 is a 3, so we're not quite to the 3, we're in between 2 times around, or 2 pi's and 3 pi's. As you can see here, we've gone once around and gotten to 2 pi, and we haven't made it all the way to that third pi yet. So we're going to take 3 pi, 
and subtract the 11 pi over 4 from that, which is going to give us that we're short of pi over 4. Now from here, we can go to our table to get our answer. And we see that the sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. Again, we can see that from our table. Now remember, though, that the cosecant is the reciprocal of our sine. So that means that the cosecant of 11 pi over 4 is going to be 2 divided by radical 2. And we're going to need to rationalize our denominator. So we'll need to multiply both our numerator and denominator by radical 2, which will give us 2 radical 2 over 2. We'll simplify, and that will give us that the cosecant of 11 pi over 4 is the square root of 2. And that is how you can evaluate trig functions for non-acute angles.